Guys, my name is Ankush Kaurav and I welcome you to Gone to Series. In the previous tutorial, we talked about path variable annotation in detail. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about use of request param annotation and alongside I will explain how to write and handle HTML forms in a Spring MVC application. Alright, let's start. Just to save some time, I've already created an ultra simple demo to explain you all these concepts. Before I start explaining everything which I've written here in the demo, let me first show you what this whole application is all about. When I run this application on the server, the client will enter this URL on the browser and will hit enter. My Spring MVC web application will send a form like this back to the client. Client will fill up the form with all the required values and then will submit the form back to my application. Once this data is received by my Spring MVC application on the server, it will process the data. And once processing is done, it will send a confirmation message back to this client saying this form has got processed successfully. Cool. These are the simple steps I have followed to develop this simple demo application. First is writing the student admission controller class having two methods get admission form and submit admission form and two JSP files admission form dot JSP file having HTML form and admission success dot JSP file. All right. Now let's understand every bit of this demo. When the client enters this URL on the browser and hits enter, the request will reach to this application. And here, the front controller of this application will state away make a call to this method and how it will decide to make a call to this method only among all other methods which are present in this application, simply by analyzing two things for this incoming URL request. First is, of course, the pattern of this URL. If the pattern of this URL is matching up with the pattern of the method which you have kept in the request mapping annotation on top of the method, the first criteria is meet to make a call to a specific method. And this concept I explained in detail in all my previous tutorials. But here you would ask me one question. Hey Ankush, what is this extra line of code you have written here? We didn't find you writing this statement anytime in all of your previous tutorials. So what exactly is this all about? This is talking about what is the HTTP request which client has made. Let's before proceeding further here, I'm assuming that you have a decent idea about what say HTTP get, post or other types of requests which a client can make to a server. All right. So here, when a client makes a request to this application using this URL, that request can be of get type, can be of post type, or can be of other HTTP request types. So when I write this statement here on top of a method, it simply means that this method can process only requests which are of type get. All right, let me explain you this way. When a client enters this URL on the browser, the browser by default makes a get request to the server. The request reaches to this application and the front controller here would straight away make a call to this method after finding the URL pattern of this request and the pattern of this method is matching up and also the type of method request this method accepts is matching up with the type of request which client has made. So here in this case, in short, the request was of get type and this method also accepts get type and its URL pattern is matching up with this pattern. That's the reason front controller made a call to this method. All right, let's proceed further. The method here is simply returning a model and view object having view details back to the front controller. The front controller would then state away forward the request to the admission form .jsp file. How? With the help of view resolver class using prefix and suffix statements. So once the control reaches here to the admission form .jsp file, it prepares the response using this HTML code. 
If you observe here, it's a simple HTML form having two fields, name and hobby, and a submit button. The point to note here in this form is the method argument in this form tag. Here I mentioned the post. So when a client would submit this form on the browser, the request type which would reach here to the application will be of a type HTTP post. So this GSP file will simply prepare a response using this HTML form and send it back to the front controller. And the front controller in turn would send this HTML form back to the client's browser. And the client will see a form like this on the browser. He will enter all required values in the fields name and hobby and will hit on this button that is submit button. Once the client hits this button, the request will again reach to this application with this URL and of type post. How? Simply because of the post method which is used in the form and the URL for this action attribute. And then the front controller would straight away make a call to this method after finding that the pattern of this method is matching up with this URL as well as the method type for this method is matching up with this request that is post all right guys now i'm going to talk about a very important thing and i would need a little more attention of yours to understand it when the client submits this form on the browser he will send the values of these two request parameters to this application along with the request that is student name and student hobbies values. Now, when the front controller makes a call to this method, the request param annotation used in the method would simply retrieve the values of student name and student hobby request parameters from the request in this body. Here, the request param annotation will simply bind the value of student name with the name variable and the value of student hobby with the hobby variable in the method. So here further in the method you can use these values anywhere you want. All right, let's proceed further. The method here is simply returning a model and view object back to the front controller having the view details and the message which has to be printed in the response web page. All right. So once it prepares and sends modern view object back to the front controller, now the front controller would forward the request to the admission success.jsp file with the help of view resolver class. And here the file is simply putting the message value which the method has already set here along with other HTML code and sends this response back to the front controller and the front controller would in turn send this response back to the client's browser. So when a client submits this form, my application here is sending this response back to it. Guys, there are a couple of points you should know about a request param annotation. Here when the client submitted a form with gone to one as name and music as hobby, my application returned same values for the request parameters in the response. Now what if the client doesn't provide the value of student name and submit the form? My application here has sent back an empty string for name and music for hobby. Now what if in this case I want to give some default values to student name when the client doesn't provide value for it. I can do that using this syntax. So here what I'm telling with the default value property of request param annotation I'm simply saying his spring MVC framework when the user would not provide value of student name then please assign this default value to student name all right so now after this change let's see on the browser if i do not provide the value of student name what my application does cool my application has considered the value of name as mr abc xyz 
because of this default value property. Guys, there's one more important point to know about a request parent annotation. What if you're tired of putting these many request param annotations here in the method argument to retrieve all values of request parameters which are coming all along with the request? You can simply avoid these many request param annotations in the method argument by using only one request param annotation on a map as we saw in the previous tutorial in the case of path variable annotation. So what you will do is simply use request param annotation on a map and further in the method you will retrieve the values of student name and hobby request parameters from the map like this. Guys a big thank you for liking my tutorials on Spring MVC series. If you have any queries or feedback please provide them below the video in the comments section or simply write to me on this ID for all of your queries. Please hit the like button if you really like the video and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Conto Series and I'm gonna catch you in my next tutorial.